if you play the raid, you are going to get a free fleet of mutineers, at least the August raid, that is. But how good is this U0 fleet that you're actually going to get, even if you build it out to exactly what you want? I'm going to answer that question, as well as answering how good are the mutineer upgrades. Hey everyone, Derpy here, and welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. First of all, a quick timeline for what I'm going to be going over. I'm not going to be going super in-depth into everything here, but if you want to stay for the really important bits, that's the comparing survival slide that you'll see, as well as the benefits and the suggested upgrade path. These are pretty important things that I would definitely stick around for, if not just skipping directly to them. Upgrade costs are shown on screen here in terms of time and kits. Information here is from Wayne's calculator, hoidmehardy.co.uk. If you do have, say, an Intel lab upgraded, your upgrade time will be lower for these different holes, but this is an approximate number because Kixi doesn't show it anywhere, which they definitely should. In terms of the build I'm using, the comparison build is shown on screen here. The important things will be listed on the next slide that I guess you already saw in terms of what specials give what survival. This is not actually one that I'm using exactly. My armor and specials are a little tiny bit different from this, but I figure this was a good average build for the community. And the weapon type here doesn't matter. It could just be none of the drumroll Gatling guns. That's not going to factor into my analysis whatsoever. Now the sources of survival are shown on screen here. This is both 51.6 thousand concussive and 51.6 thousand explosive survival. If you run something slightly differently and have an older armor or a different armor or the better engine, the Reef Rider engine instead of the Old Glory engine, it won't really matter at this point. These numbers are the numbers by changing that would be fairly low. So the conclusions I'm reaching at the end will still be valid and will still apply to you. Here is the U1 upgrades. This, in my opinion, is very minor. Once you do the math, you get a 16% bonus to all your ships in terms of combat speed, and this will really just allow you to catch the battle cruisers more quickly and maybe make it that you don't need Hyper 30, and instead you could use Guidance Square number 3, which everyone probably should have been doing anyway. This is overall a minor upgrade, but it's less than a day per upgrade, and you do have a bunch of upgrade tokens that have been available in the TLC twice, as well as Raid, Pillage, etc., very possible to get U1 done, although you will see almost no difference. Maybe you can drive the targets a little bit better at U1 than at U0. At U2, what the only benefit we see here is more survival, 15,000 survival. And if you are at 51k and you jump by 15k, you would think that's a huge number and a really, really big change. It's actually not because of the diminishing effects of survival. If you were at 51,000 before, you'll be at 66.6 .6 now. And that will, at the end of the day, end up in a 19% decrease in damage taken doing the math. This is definitely a significant number, meaning if I was taking damage before, I'm now taking less. But there's the number just so that you can know, and I will summarize this at the end in another table. U3 does also give some various different benefits, and it's only attack related in this one. Your reload is 25% better, or you see 25% improvement on your reload time rather, and you see a doubling in your proto ammo. This is the really big takeaway from U3, because you can start to kill things in one volley of proto ammo that you couldn't before. So you can start to kill some Typhoon, some Tempest before much more quickly, and the flagship does have a little bit better of a damage boost, so you should have more weapons on that one if possible. And also, it does have better proto ammo because it has that black spot slow effect. So if you're upgrading one ship to U3, the flagship should be first, but again, I'll give recommendations at the end. For X1, we can see it adds 35,000 survival, which seems like a huge number if you don't know the math behind this. What this ends up doing is it's a 31% reduction in damage taken from U2 to X1, and comparing it from to an X1 fleet to U0 fleet, the X1 fleet will have a 43% reduction in damage taken, which means just under half the damage taken, so it's twice as good essentially. You also do see proto ammo damage you, your proto ammo your proto ammo damage does increase by 40%, which is great. And the really big part about here, the flagship upgrade, which takes like 10 days, has a generation aura, which means it can generate its own ammo, one ammo per two seconds to all nearby Muneers. This is fantastic and is the best upgrade out of this entire Muneer set. Obviously, it's the Muneer flagship X1 upgrade, so that's what you should expect. Now, here is a summary table comparing survival at U0, U2, and X1. I didn't put U3 or U1 on here because they don't add survival. This is just a table comparing survival. 
you can see that it gives the survival you actually have, the damage taken as a percent of incoming damage, as well as the baseline. So if you took 60 minutes of repair at U0, that's going to drop to 49 minutes of repair at U2, and then finally drop to 34 minutes of repair at X1. So your fleet is about twice as good just in terms of survival, it's under just under twice as good at X1 as it was at U0. This is significant. You do also see benefits other than survival, I bolded the important ones here. Your reload is better, your damage from your proto ammo is doubled, you have extra damage from the flag, whatever, extra speed, whatever. Proto damage is higher by 40%, and you have generation aura on the flagship. This means with this last one, you can start to drive completely differently, moving away from something, not worrying about the ammo carriers, and just blitzing in one shot in the typhoons, and that's it. So upgrades will make a big difference in how you are able to do the targets. Now in terms of my recommendation for how to upgrade your fleets, once your entire fleet's working and you have a built, if you have something else to build like the Everest or the Gladius, build that instead. Your fleet's at U0 what works. Leave it there unless you have extra tokens laying around. If you do, the higher upgrades give more benefit here as they usually do. Getting everything up to U2 is okay in terms of just getting that survival number, but U3 is good for the damage and X1 is also really good for damage and more survival. The flagship upgrade is obviously the best one, so do that first if you are spending any sort of slow time on this thing whatsoever, and hopefully most of you have your flagship already upgraded just a little bit. And I'm going to say to max out one ship, then do the others. We'll get the multi U2 and then go up to X1 if possible. Don't really leave things at U3. The X1 benefits are really just so good. And if you can have one ship that's taking more damage, generally slots two or five seem to take more damage than the others, and you can park your ship with twice the survival in there, do that. So you, you end up taking all the damage goes on that one ship there. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to go back and screenshot anything like the survival table, I'll go back to that there because that's the really important takeaway from this thing. Your fleet will be about twice as good at X1 as at U0. I hope this helped. If you have questions on my, this video, go ahead and leave a comment below. And as always, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.